Hello friends and welcome to the third episode of my completion series. Today I'm going to be talking about The Red Pill, a documentary film by Casey J about the men's rights movement or men's rights activist and her descent as a feminist into their realm. Now, I literally just stopped watching uh, or ended watching it a few moments ago. So, it's still very much with me. And it, it touched a few uh, heartstrings, and I'm not one to get emotional. I, I tend to not enjoy emotions because they get in the way of logic and they get in the way of my ability to think correctly. And I think that happens for a lot of people, but it definitely tugs at my heartstrings. Um, I guess because I have an extremely younger brother who is growing up in this society and it's very much I see against him and I'm doing my part as his older brother hopefully to combat that now I should give my history on the matter I probably have spent the past few years of my life uh, as a MGTOW uh, a man going his own way but yet not such an a an at, not an adamant one I did my own thing which was what I thought the movement was about but a lot of the men in the movement tend to have strict rules which I wasn't for because I maintain a lot of my friendships with women I just didn't have any expectations of them or give them any expectations of me providing for them at all so and I kept these relationships because they I felt they were positive and I guess that's why I never went full-blown anti-woman uh, or anti-relationship. But I was very vocal to my friends about it. I kept telling them that I thought relationships were not good for them and how they were going to lose more than they would gain and that they should move on constantly. Like, you shouldn't be tied down. Now... In probably the past six months, I've been listening a lot to Jordan Peterson, and he brings this up quite a bit. So it's definitely, again, I challenge my thoughts, I challenge my ideas, and he brings up a lot of good points, especially with his Maps and Meaning series, which I'm going through now, and I'm probably going to do one of these on that soon, as soon as it's done, because it's very good, and it's definitely made me think about my own nihilism, and how that has affected my life and how I've thought about things. So that's where I am at. I was on my way out of the MGTOW society, I guess you could say. I wasn't fully in it to begin with, but that's where I was. Kind of in that, that, that zone of, okay, if I had seen this movie before I started listening to Jordan Peterson, I'd probably go full-blown MGTOW, Women Are the Devil. No, I'm not going that route. I've been leaning towards my friends uh, a lot who have found some relationships that they think are good. Uh, I'm in full support of my cur current friend who is pending his nuptials and I'm involved in that in somewhat way. Uh, and I'm looking forward to it actually because it seems like it's going to be a good time. But I never spoke out against it like I probably would have done a few years ago. Uh, would have been heavily against it. So, during this documentary, I just kept going over all the things it was going over in my head that I already knew. So it was definitely a confirmation bias problem, probably through it for myself, for someone who thinks already and knows most of these stats. Uh, and where it tugged at my emotions was how no one cared. And, and that is probably because of my own experience and my own guilt for something that has occurred in my life. There's a very, very specific point with my brother who's who was 10 or 11 at, his, at the time. Now, he's playing with his, his younger female cousin by the pool. He picks her up. She's kicking at him, but he's pretending he's going to throw her in. He's really probably not going to throw her in because she can't really swim that well, but she can swim. She's not a horrible swimmer, and neither is he. But she's kicking him and kicking him and kicking him. And these are these are pretty good shots, too. Now, she gets one in, 
and it causes him to tip over and they go in. Splash into the water. Every single mother, including his own, ran over to the pool to get the little girl out. My brother had to pull himself up from the pool. I watched this. I was right there. Me and my father stared at him. The whole thing. Watched him pull himself out of the pool, shivering because it was cold. Walks over to us, and my father looks at him and goes, Son, you just learned a very valuable lesson. No one's going to come and help you. Look over there. Every mother, his aunts, his own mother, all over there. His grandmother, putting towels around this young girl. Him, standing there shivering. Me and my father, were staring at him. And we just said, no one's going to help you. No one cares about you. You have to care about yourself. And at the time, I thought, this is a great lesson. Because it's true. No one's coming for him. No one's going to help him. He's a man. He's going to have to figure it out on his own. That's what men do. Now, I still believe that. But I wish I would have voiced my anger towards the mothers and his aunts and his grandmother on how they just ignored him. That bothered me. And I didn't say anything. I didn't defend him. And I should have. And I think that's what society has done. We don't value the life of men, as this documentary very much shows. Men are not valuable to this society. They will be once they're gone. Because men are no longer reproducing. They're being smart. They're not reproducing with women because they're not valued. And women are finding ways to reproduce on their own. That's what they want. If that's what they want, then... Hey, good for them. Then they can live without men. They can live in their own society without men. That's the way the feminists seem to think, and that's what they want. But I'm getting a little hyperbolic right now because I'm thinking a lot about this, and this is very much right after viewing the documentary. So my blood's a little up, I'm guessing. Now, there's been a recent development, actually, in the feminist community of Lacey Green, who is attempting to converse with the anti-fem and is befriending a few and discussing and wanting to debate ideas. Lacey Green is a adver- very much a adversarial feminist. Ad- adversarial is the wrong word. She's definitely a feminist who isn't afraid of her own ideas and believes in her ideas even though a lot of them are wrong. And she is now going to put them to task. And I can respect that. And I see the anti-fem community, a lot of them being like, hey, good for you. Let's go. Let's talk. Let's, we'll do this. We'll be, let's be respectful. Let's have a, an actual discussion. And, you know, where you land is where you land. And if maybe you can convince some of us and maybe... You know, we'll convince you a little bit to be on our side. Um, that's where I see that community at. The f- hardcore feminist community, the radical femmes, and their their cuck allies are all over Lacey right now. And I really hope she stands up and holds the line on this. And she just keeps doing what she's doing because she could be the next Christina Hoff Summers. She could be the next one who sees the light and becomes an advocate of discussion. That's all That's all the anti-femmes really want, is a discussion. But you have guys like Steve Shives who say, no, they're, they're, they, you can't discuss this with them because they're, they're just morally wrong. We can't get to them. There's nothing to discuss because this is settled science, as you know, Bill Nye would say. It's settled science. You can't discuss it. You just have to believe it. You have to listen and believe it. And so I think that's horrible. I think it's really horrible. So I guess, in conclusion, the documentary definitely affected me. It definitely got to me a little bit uh, on an emotional level as a man. So with that, I just have to say thank you to the Raj fans, actually, because they do do one thing for us. They tell men to educate themselves because sure as hell no one else will do it.